वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस टी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग पेपर लिंग्विस्टिक्स एंड इन दिस मॉड्यूल नंबर थर्टी वन यूनिवर्सल ग्रामर एंड द थियरी ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स एंड पैरामीटर हैज बीन रिटन बाय डॉक्टर वी वामशी कृष्ण रेड्डी फ्रॉम एन आई टी राउरकेला linguist right from early 20th century theorized language acquisition and human ability to speak from the behaviorist perspective they therefore argued that language learning is similar to any other kind of learning and it could be substantiated by series of trials and errors children they acquire mother tongue or we know it by other name that is l1 by simple simple listening to repeating and most importantly imitating the adults around hence imitation is constituted as fundamental premise on which any language learning is played on we have seen that when child acquires a language it's not that he only just acquires particular words he acquires the pattern also he acquires the particular uh, stress rhythm intonation practices used by elders around him or her so that's why imitation is something very important and this is how in at initial level child acquires that language however this behaviorist perspective is contested at a later stage stage by the american linguist noam chomsky for chomsky acquiring language capabilities cannot be deduced to mere formulating a stock list of responses to stimuli because each sentence that anyone develops can be completely new combination of words language is regulated and governed by a number of rules conventions and principles especially those of syntax that decide the order of words in sentence we all know that syntax or the order of words is different our uh, language to language whatever uh, system we have in hindi language we have different system in english language chomsky argued that sentences are not simply a string of words but rather a tree with subordinate and superordinate branches connected at nodes for example this is the very famous example on your screen you can see the dog ate the bone it can be seen in the following this tree diagram where all the components are described separately noun phrase verb phrase what are the noun phrase determiner noun verb verb phrase may be we have verb and uh, other things so the dog ate on one side and determiner and noun the bone on the other side and that makes it quite clear the term generative grammar often being used in this particular series pertains to the set of rules that enables everyone to comprehend sentences of which we are generally unaware of most of the times we realize the error in the sentence but cannot explain why it is so in the same way we tend to make grammatically correct sentences even if we are not particularly aware of the rules it is precisely because of generative grammar that we say that's how you say it instead of how that's you it say no we will never say like that that's how you say it we are used to saying like this so we have just adopted this generative grammar and that's why we know that it is right if, but if somebody ask you why it is right why anything else is not correct you maybe you are not in the position to explain that it should also be noted that generative grammar has nothing much to do with core grammar rules and textbooks but only indicates what is grammatically correct and incorrect in a given language even at the age of 5 children can without possessing any formal instructions in grammar persistently produce and render sentences that they have never encountered before it is this significant ability to deploy language despite of having partial exposure to the practical and permissible syntactic variants that propelled chomsky to come up with his 
poverty of the stimulus theory which is the foundation of the distinct approach that he contended in the early 1960s now contours of universal grammar universal grammar espouses the idea that all languages share some fundamental similarities and that can be attributed to innate principles singular to language that deep down there is only one human language this idea has generated an enormous interest in linguistics philosophy psychology and other social and cognitive sciences According to Chomsky the reason that children so eloquently articulate the complex structure of language is that they have innate knowledge of certain principles that drive them in producing the grammar of their language in other words Chomsky argues that language learning is assuaged our brains which have for certain innate structure of language that is not uh, is the case with other animals or other species all the languages in the world share certain structural properties that are common in fact chomsky and other generative linguists reasoned that the more than 6000 languages in the world despite of having different grammars share a set of common syntactic rules and principles These linguists strongly affirm that universal grammar is innate and is embedded in the neuro neuronal circuitry of the human brain. Universal grammar is broadly defined as a theory that consists of a set of unconscious constraints that let let us decide if a sentence is correctly structured or not. However, this phenomena of mental grammar is not necessarily similar for all languages. According to Chomskyan theories, the evolution by which in any given language some sentences are discerned as correct while others are not is independent of meaning and universal. For example, we subsequently understand that the sentence Bharat essay writes the is not correct english despite of the fact that it makes sense to us and have an idea of what it means in the same way we understand that a sentence such as colorless green ideas sleep furiously this sentence is proposed by noam chomsky in his book syntactic structures written in 1957 it is grammatically correct english even though it does not make much sense semantically colorless green ideas sleep furiously it is not bringing any proper sense to convey likewise a child has the ability to speak any number of languages depending upon region and country he or she is born in and the speech is determined by the child but certain preferred innate structures will be adopted subsequently one of the ways to describe these innate structures is that children don't learn things but things happen to them this phenomena is similar to children's natural physical development over the years and children naturally learn to speak and not to chirp they are not birds until universal grammar is propounded by chomsky in the 1960s the empiricist school dominated the discourse on language and its acquisition among children they argued that children mind are like blank slates and any print on them is possible through imitation by the peer group as well as the adults around them however chomsky's theory had impacted the way linguists are studying and researching for a long time with the arrival of ideas of universal grammar The established ideas of behaviorist theories have been severely challenged with research in the cognitive sciences with juxtaposition with tools of linguistics psychology philosophy and computer science soon borrowed assistance to the theory of universal grammar For instance linguists found that children a few days old can differentiate the phonemes and seem to have an innate framework for processing the speech of the human voice
Hence, right from birth, children seem to have certain linguistic abilities that indoctrinate them not only to possess a complex language, but also to create one if required. Evolution of Pidgin language is often cited in order to explain this phenomena. During the era of brutal slavery, the slaves who were brought from several regions to work in various plantations had different mother tongues. Therefore, they developed Pidgin languages to communicate with one another. Pidgin languages are not languages in a typical linguistic sense because they deploy words and expressions so chaotically. We find tremendous variation in word order and importantly very little grammar. But the children of the slaves, despite of being exposed to various pidgins at very young age, when they generally acquire their first language did not imitate them. Rather, the children spontaneously introduced grammatical complexity into their speech. Thus, in the space of one generation creating new languages known as Creoles. Whenever we talk about evolution of language, we know that many researchers taking the approach of evolutionary psychology believe that language is shaped by natural selection. They view that certain random genetic mutations are chosen over thousands of years to provide individuals with a decisive adaptive advantage. But Chomsky disagrees that our linguistic faculties are possessed or as having originated from any particular selective pressure, but rather as a sort of different kind of accident. As part of universal grammar, recursion is formally developed, not to assist us to communicate, but rather to aid us to figure out other problems interconnected. In things such as social relations and numerical quantification, humans are not capable of deploying complex language until recursion is attached with the other motor and perceptual abilities required for this very purpose. At this juncture, Chomsky and his followers argue that there is nothing to suggest that this connection is achieved through natural selection. They strongly espouse that this phenomena is the result of some kind of neuronal reorganization. When we talk about theory of principles and parameters, we know that the fundamental premise of principle and parameters theory is to distinguish the invariants of human language, the principles from the major point of cross-linguistic variation and the parameters. Both principles and parameters are considered to manifest innately determined and biological characteristics of the human brain. In the normal course of child growth, principles and parameters diverge distinct ways. The principles components seem to function in much the same way in all children with minimum sensitivity to their milieu while the parameters take on unique values as a function of the child's linguistic input. The term parameter is usually held for points of restricted variations. The principles and parameters framework also recognizes that languages vary in ways that are relatively unconstrained by universal grammar. The origins of this framework addresses two fundamental issues of modern linguistics. One, what exactly do you know when you know your native language? And secondly, how did you know it? A satisfactory and probable answer to such questions must address the poverty of the stimulus which also includes the reality that children are not constructively rectified when they make grammatical errors. Despite of the presence of poverty of a stimulus, at the age of five, we discover uniformity of success at language acquisition.
Barring the conditions such as isolation from natural language input or medical abnormality, every child acquires a grammar that nearly corresponds the grammar of his or her guardians. Even when a child is still engaging in the process of language acquisition, in his young age, phenomenally, certain logically probable errors are observed in the child's spontaneous speech. Thus, shows clearly children do not necessarily acquire grammar via simple trial and error learning processes. You can just uh, remember your childhood days when you started speaking, then what happened? First, you just could get hold of certain words and then started weaving those words into a chain of uh, sentence to communicate what you wanted to but at that time also when using wrong grammar in your mother tongue it was never ever pointed out that way and people around you used to feel happy that you could communicate but they never ever tried to correct you for that every time when you made errors. So researchers working in the principles and parameters framework have arrived at conclusion that significant grammatical content or information must be present in the child's brain at birth. Though several languages across the world showcase different grammars, However, the primary argument in principles and parameters is thus the options for variations in grammar. They are extremely limited. Within the framework of principles and parameters, research on children's language acquisition brings a lot of importance such as how in principle is the factual grammar chosen from the proposed options. Using merely certain types of linguistic input that children really require for successful acquisition of language. Language acquisition belief within the principles and parameters framework dwells in testing the acquisition prediction of projected linguistic principles. Chomsky is one of the most popular public intellectual at this moment. However, there are many scholars who contested his ideas and theories. But both his universal grammar and principles and parameters theory is immensely discussed and debated. Let us look at some of the criticism that is aimed at his work. Chomskyans continue to affirm that language is pre-organized, I quote, pre-organized in some way or the other within the neuronal structure of the human brain and that the milieu only constructs the configuration of the network into a specific language around him. However, biologists such as Philip Leiberman, for instance, argues that language is not an instinct encoded in the cortical networks of a language organ, but rather a learned skill based on a functional language system distributed across numerous cortical and subcortical structures of a human child. Even though Libman recognizes that human language system is by far superior and the most sophisticated form of communications in the world, he does not agree that it is substantially different form as Chomsky proclaims. Apart from Libermann, Terence Decon and other researchers have exhibited that it is the neural circuits of the system but not certain language organ that controls or constitutes a genetically permeated set which commands the possible components of a language. Another theory that attempts to bring a substitute to Chomsky's universal grammar is generative semantics, progressed by linguist George Lakoff. While contesting Chomsky's theories, Lakoff demonstrates that context, semantics and other components can come into play in the rules that command syntax. Moreover, metaphor, which is considered by early researchers as a mere linguistic device, turns for lack of a theoretical construct that is fundamental and essential to the development of thought. Chomsky's theory of universal grammar provides a path-breaking idea that 
substantiates as how languages work and how do they constitute certain components how are they so innate in every human brain and how does this innateness bring out certain principles and parameters in language acquisition of children even we also consider it a question that how it is possible that a child taking birth in a particular area particular country particular region learns a particular dialect and when a child is there in other circumstances he is so much influenced by circumstances and the people around him that his language learning ability is just changed dramatically so whenever we just think about it usually would we don't think about it because it is so natural around us that we take it normally but whenever we think about it we just come to know how it happens and then these theories these researchers and the researches made by them show us the path how and why these things happen to conclude we can say that chomsky considered as the father of modern linguistics his theories had great impact on modern linguistics and learning of language he made a study of linguistics and the ling theories thoroughly as a scientific one because of his work because of his theory we say that linguistics is a scientific study of language whatever he propounds he has certain observations and certain things to prove in a scientific way so that's why whatever theories he has propounded has certain solid background especially the universal grammar theory thank you for visiting epg patshala